Hey everyone, my name is Corey, and today we're going to be creating a very simple intro using some masking and some luma matting. So recently, uh, it might not be on the channel, but I created this intro. It was kind of just a shower thought of, you know, hey, I think this would be cool. I know this was inspired by something, but I don't remember. So this is just an intro for the podcast that I do with some friends. Um, it's kind of all over our channel, so hopefully you've seen some of it. If not, please go check it out. I'm sure there will be a link in the description. But we're going to create this basically just from scratch. We're going to go through the whole thing. There's a couple important concepts that we use here. We use just, it's very simple though, masking, uh, opacity, transparency, and then just luma mat or the track mats. So the first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and do our standard new project new composition i used a red background i want to do five seconds this is just going to be called intro and let's throw some text on here uh, i don't remember what font i use so we'll go arp go into our line and center everything up just so everything looks nice i think that's pretty good maybe make the text a little bit bigger yeah that's good I swear this align tab over here is like one of my favorite things. If you don't have it, it should be under window, click align, drag to wherever you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to first animate this. So this is really simple to do too. This is where we cr click on our text, um, create, select the rectangle tool and draw a square around our text. So this creates a mask over the text and this is essentially what we want the end result to be. At the end of the animation it shows ARP. So if we go under our mask options and we click on mask path, this is essentially what we want to do to animate. So if you click on the stopwatch here to create a keyframe, go back to zero, click on the text layer, grab our selection tool and let's just drag these points of the mask to zero. So now what we've done is we've animated this so if you go through and scroll, we've essentially just animated ARP coming in and out. So the next thing we did is we kind of have like a typewriter effect thing going on. So if we create another layer, and let's just go ahead and make the uh, cursor. I'm going to go ahead and move this here. Let's make this a little bit shorter and a little bit thinner. And I use white. Okay. The fill, um, let's do white. Let's choose white as the color there. Maybe make it a little bit thinner. I don't like to have a stroke <laughs> in real life and also in this animation. So that's pretty good. Actually, let's make that a little bit smaller. That should be good. And again, let's go ahead and align that horizontally. Still a little bit too tall. So we'll go this way. Align that again. Much better. Okay, so we have our shape layer here. And essentially what we want to do is we want to have it drag across the screen. So the first thing, again, we hit P on our keyboard. That'll bring up the position uh, option. If we start a keyframe at zero, go to the end, click on the bar, hit shift, and oops, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Click on position, click, shift, drag across to the end there. Now what we've done is correctly animated the first part of our intro. If we, if we go ahead and play that, it types it out. So a couple of cool things we can do is mess with the opacity. The opacity is T. If you click on T on the shape layer, it'll bring up the opacity. And we can start off at 100, maybe go uh, 4, 5. Actually, you know what we could do is we can delay this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on both of these layers. Both of these layers, hit U. It'll bring up all of the keyframes for both of these layers. And let's move the position keyframes on both of these layers out a little bit say 10 frames and so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the opacity layer of our original okay and so let's go uh, let's go three frames and do the opacity of zero another three frames 
we'll do zero and then uh, four frames that's fine I didn't do the math correct but that's all right so hundred zero zero yeah that's okay I think we should do another set honestly you should have four so let's just do the math right and then one two three here this will be uh, 100, 0, 100, and then 1, 2, 3, this will be 0, and then 1, 2, 3. So that's where everything, oops, sorry. Nope. Just going to move these keyframes out so we have a little bit cleaner look. So if we go, it blinks in does that and you can even have a blink out by doing the same thing I would maybe slow this down a little bit or honestly start what we should do is we should start the position this starting keyframe needs to be a little bit this way ah that looks better oh, a little bit a little bit further backwards a little bit much better that looks much you can tell the difference is now when it types, it actually looks like it's typing it. And maybe the ending keyframe for the position, I'm gonna leave it a little bit, a little bit closer, something like that. And then again, we could have in and out, in and out. But what I'm gonna do, two, three, four, five. I'm just gonna have it fade to zero in five frames. So if we play that, ARP. Oop, we got one thing we need to have. Let's actually do one, two, wait, 102. I'm going to move it back two frames just so it's even. There we go. And one, two, three. Three frames. This should be, this should be 100%. And then at three frames, we want to fade to zero. So if we play that again, the cursor is essentially just going to fade out. Blink. Okay. Let's see. So that's that's zero. This needs to be 100. I'm not sure why that didn't change. So it changes to 100, and then it fades out. Let's see. Better. Much better. Okay. So the next thing that we have is we have two other shape layers that are above and below ARP. So again, if we select our rectangle tool and we're just going to draw a rectangle here. Let's see how that looks. Ooh, too long. Let's make that a little bit shorter. Uh, that's good. Let's uh, move this a little bit down and around. There we go. Let me make sure there's no stroke on this. Good. And so I'm going to just duplicate this and essentially just move it directly above ARP. Something like that. Okay. And so again, all we have to do is create a mask. So again, if we cl click on the shape layer, Ooh, we should rename these. This will be the bottom, and this will be the top. So if we click on the bottom, click on the rectangle tool to create, not that, but a mask over this. Okay, and again, this is what we want the end result to be. And so I'm syncing all these up. I'm going to again select everything, hit U on the keyboard to bring up the uh, keyframes that we have. So if we go into our bottom, we have a mask. And again, if we create, create our mask path, we want, um, we actually want it to start off at zero. So I think I'm going to go, say, how many frames is this? This is one second. So we'll go ten, seven seconds. Ten. That's honestly too slow. Let's go five. So that's eight, eight frames. Eight. 
Okay, so let's start here. This is what we want our ending frame to be, so we got to go to 13. 13, okay, this is how we're going to end it. And I want it to kind of start immediately after. So again, we'll select the bottom, select our selection tool, and just drag everything over. And drag the top over. So again, if we play it, it'll open up our line there. And so we're going to do the same thing from the top, except inverted. So I need to see where this keyframe is. 10 seconds, select the top, select the rectangle tool, uh, make sure you select the mask tool. So you have, when you select the rectangle tool, you have options to create the shape itself or to create a shape mask. So in this case, make sure you have the shape mask selected and then you can create your mask here. So again, we want at uh, one second, one second, uh, this is way too fast, but we're just doing this for tutorial purposes. Obviously you want to slow this down. Uh, we want to create a um, mask path. So that's what we want the end result to be. And the beginning result is we want this to start here this time. So from the opposite side of ARP, the inverse of the, the below. So now if we play it, we will have ARP coming in from both sides. We have ARP coming in, and we have our two masks. I actually think, yeah, that's way too slow. We need to fix, the only thing we need to do is fix the shape layer of this. So this is going in, yeah, that's way too soon. I think it's because we messed with it, right? Um... I think we want to change the starting position to be here. No, that's too far forward. That's better. Let's see how that looks. A little bit better, but you can kind of see the masking there a little bit. So let's again move it a little bit too far. So we'll move it back just a tad. There we go. That looks much better. Let's go ahead and run that again. One more time. Yeah, that looks much better. So the final thing that we have to do is add our text on the bottom or your images at the top. I'm not going to throw in the images. You'll get the idea. So I'm going to create a new text layer, and this will say the, capitalize it, apocalypse. Is that right? Apocalypse. Podcast. Okay, select all of the thing, and we need to drastically scale this down. If we kind of want to achieve the same effect, and let's go ahead and stick this down there. Just maybe a bit, a bit smaller. A bit, a bit. Nope, nope. That was it. I had it. There it is. That's perfect. So we line that up nicely. That looks good enough. So here is where we kind of want the text just to pop up below this line here, and we do this using an alpha mat. So if we select a new shape layer, and that doesn't matter what color it is, layer new solid is another way to do it. Create a new solid, the entire size of the uh, image plane here. So in, if we scale this down just to where it covers up the Apocalypse Rescheduled podcast, that's good enough. And if we go and select the Apocalypse Rescheduled, the text that we have, and we make that the alpha mat of our white solid one. So the alpha mat of the top. If you don't have these um, options here, all you have to do is hit toggle switches and modes. This will bring up the um, parenting and 3D and compositing modes. And toggling will bring up the track mats and the modes and all that stuff. So now what we've done is we've essentially said by by alpha matting the white solid to apocalypse rescheduled basically that white area that we had is the only place that this apocalypse rescheduled will show up from 
So this is where simply we create our position. We create a new keyframe. Again, I'm gonna find out where my keyframes are. So I essentially wanted to show up right after the line shows up. So click on the position, um, stopwatch to create a new keyframe, and I want it to come from the top. If you want it to come from the bottom, you can come from the bottom too, but I think it looks a little bit more clean if you come from the top. And again, you'll see this little kind of space here where it's showing up. And in order to change that, you would just move the alpha mask. So if you really want it to come up from right below where that line is, you just move the alpha mat. And um, yeah, so we're going to change the position to be directly above. Directly above. I don't really want it to move that distance that far and so in five frames so that'd be 18 we'll move the position all the way down so now if we play all the way back from the beginning we have ARP lines and the text falls underneath really simple thing to do and again with the same thing if you had images you would do the same thing and if you had more text on the top you would do the same thing really simple thing to do with some very simple concepts really easy. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have questions, please let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Corey from the Techies.